Therapists say there's been a rise in politically related anxiety called Trump anxiety disorder. The main symptom, fearing the world is ending. But our next guest says there's no real scientific evidence to back this up. Joining us right now is a former mental health policy fellow in the U.S. Senate and psychiatrist Dr. Daniel Bober joins us today from Los Angeles. Doctor, thanks very much for making a, a house call today. Thanks for having me. Um, who are these people who are going to uh, psychiatrists and psychologists complaining that they can't take Trump anymore? You know, I practice in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which is sort of the Democratic stronghold of Florida, and I am not seeing this at all. So I know for certain that it's not an official diagnosis. Uh, there might be some people that have displeasure with the president's policies, but it's not something that I'm seeing on a large scale if it's actually happening. I, I, I was reading somewhere, doctor, that uh, last week the, when the president sent out the tweet to Iran in all caps, it freaked some people out to the point where they thought, is this the end of the world? And then they, in turn, talked to uh, trained professionals like yourself about it. You know, they may have had some underlying anxiety to begin with, but it really depends on your perspective, right? Politics is about perception. It's about the world and how you see, and the lens through which you see it. So if you're someone who is sort of left-leaning, you might find anxiety mm -hmm. in these words. And if you're someone who leans towards the right, you may find, you know, comfort in tough talk. Sure. So what about the people who do go to see a professional? Uh, do they just want to talk it out or do they want a pill that they can take until the end of uh, the Trump years? I find that people more often are more about pills than skills. You know, skills <laughs> require you to actually do the work, and sometimes pills are a quick fix. But, you know, there are a lot of things you can do for anxiety that don't involve pills. You know, you could listen to music, you could meditate, you could do yoga, sort, sort of the low-tech kind of stuff that works really well before having to give someone a pill. Uh, doctor, do you find that people who are more invested in politics are more likely to have anxiety when uh, somebody they don't particularly like is in a position of power? I think that's true on both sides, whether you're a Democrat or Republican. If you don't have an administration that aligns with your values and your viewpoint, it tends to make you anxious and sometimes, frankly, irritated. Mm -hmm. So just to summarize, once again, there, in the medical world, there is no such thing as Trump anxiety, right? It's sort of partisan pop psychology. There is no official diagnosis of Trump anxiety. There may be people who are anxious, but there's no Trump anxiety on a large scale and in any fish, official capacity anyway. Okay, you can't find it in a book today. Uh, Dr. Daniel nope. Bober, psychiatrist, we thank you very much for joining us today from L.A.